Peace, everybody. My name is Willie Green, and welcome to The Greenhouse, my studio in beautiful Brooklyn, New York. And today we're here with Fab Filter and Sonic Scoop to show you three ways to make your plugins sound better with Volcano 3. Let's do it. Volcano 3 is a super powerful modulating filter plugin from Fab Filter. It can warp any instrument or sound you've got into something strange, beautiful, and probably danceable too. But you know me, I want to do something different. So we're going to talk about how to affect other effects using Volcano. You often hear me talking about putting the sauce on a song. The sauce is effects and ear candy to kind of perk up the listener's ears, right? But we don't serve the sauce out of a jar around here, right? We got artisanal sauce here. We got to make our own. And so often that means putting multiple plugins in a row or processing serially to get effects that nobody else has. So today we've got a beautiful record from Jen O'Hagan produced by Sochi. And we're gonna take a look at how Volcano gets us some homegrown flavors in our sauce. So to begin, you know, I like to hear a little bit of the song, start to see what we're dealing with. So let's just hop in. I'm gonna play you a little bit just of the first verse so we can get warmed up and see what we're looking at here. The song is called Falling Down. All right, so that's a nice little start to the song. Very pretty voice. We got some ethereal guitars going on. We got some atmosphere. But first, I want to look at the vocal treatment and how we're using Volcano to emphasize that. So on Jen's voice, we've got a little bit of widening plugins. A lot of people are used to an ADT, which is automatic double tracking to kind of thicken things, or using a micro pitch shift, taking pitch shifters and tuning one up just a few cents and down just a few cents on the other side to get some width. And those things are cool. And I'm actually using a little bit of both of those here. If we go to our ADT track here in our mixer, you'll see what we've got going on. We've got a little bit of the Waves Real ADT. We've got a little micro shift going on here from Sound Toys. But then we got our Volcano, right? We got those first two sounds and they're fine. And let's take a listen to that track with just the widening that we started with. What a week in the morning. And the tears start falling. Right? Like, that's nice. Got some texture to it. We hear that back in context. I'll turn it up a little bit so it comes right out of the mix. What a week in the morning. Like right there. Okay, so there's a little extra weight to Jen's voice. We've got a little stereo spread, but you know, a lot of people do that. So let's do something else. Let's open up Volcano. We'll take it out of bypass. And you know, Vol Volcano is one of those plugins that's so powerful. There's so many different aspects to it, so many different parameters that on this, I usually will start with a little bit of a preset and then start to adjust to my needs. So we started with this preset here, modulated band pass. And now with that in, let's hear what that's doing to our ADT track. What do we Okay, let's go into solo. Okay, so now we've got some different stuff happening. So you see our filters when we play back. Due to the envelope following, they're kind of spreading out and giving us some nice movement there. If I bypass. What a week in the morning. What a week in the morning. 
So it's going to thin out our signal a little bit because they're filters and they're taking off some of that top and bottom, but they're spreading out a little bit due to following the envelope, the level of Jen's voice as it comes in. So now we've got some momentum, we've got some movement and some texture shifting going on with the plugin based off of Jen's voice. So even though it's got a little bit of unnatural sound to it, we blend that down and it's just naturally enhancing her voice based off what she's doing. When she pushes harder, it's going to push harder, right? It's not just a static effect. Let's hear that in context now. Here, one more without. And the tears start falling down. Let's bring it in. Kiss your way till I'm all in. Thought I'd have had a better idea now. Right? So she pushes wide awake in the morning. You know, the certain syllables when she pushes and is using her mic technique and flavor to emphasize her words, it's now also emphasizing the effect. So that's a nice way just to follow what she's doing. And we get to push a little bit more and some dynamic movement in the effect around her voice. All right. So that's number one. That's nice. That's very cool. But we can get a little spacier than that, right? We can stretch out a little more than that, right? Well, let's jump over to the drop to the breakdown where we've got a little bit of guitar going. Let's hear this guitar solo hitting here. So that guitar came in and they sent me an effects track and we've certainly got some stuff going on there, you know, but if some effects are cool, more effects are probably better, right? That's what we're doing here today. So let's take a look at this volcano verb here. We've got our guitar solo that's going there. In context for the guitar, we've got all of this stuff that they sent us. So that's coming from the producer and that's some delays and verbs and distortions and all the stuff that I like, but it is all very front to back. And while it's a, mo it's a stereo sound, there is no side to side movement. I need a little shimmy. I need a little shoulder. You know, I like to move my shoulders, you know? And so I want to get that from this guitar. So I sent the dry guitar. I sent it over to this reverb here. Well, Fab Filter Pro R, beautiful sounding reverb, you know, it's very nice. Pretty short decay time, just that one second. And so that gives us a little bit of space. But we've got space in the other stuff. What we need now, we need that shimmy. So we're going to open up Volcano to go along with our Pro R. And so this is after Pro R. Now, when you're processing in series, it's important to remember what comes where, right? If I put Volcano before my reverb, it's going to filter and modulate that signal and then send that into the reverb and that's going to splash out into our stereo field. But I want to affect the reverb itself. So I have the reverb first and then Volcano. So our splash our reverb spread, our trail, that is what's now going to move. So we see this and you already see, it's got some movement, it's got some left and right, some up and down. Let's see what this is gonna do to the reverb. Let's listen to just the verb. Now alone, this kind of sounds like chaos. I get it. I understand where you're coming from, but I like a little chaos in this digital world that we live in with 
automatable plugins and instant recall everything and everything saves right in your computer and you set it and you forget it. I often like to try to incorporate a little bit of randomness, a little bit of chaos into my mixes when I can, when appropriate, of course, you know, but just something just to give, that's the life that we lose when the computer does everything the same way every time, right? So we've got the scramble preset, which sounds about exactly what I want it to do. And now it's giving some left and right movement to the reverb return. So the space is now shimmying. And we add that. Now this is back to the guitar. Right, and so that works because it's a reversed guitar solo already. It's already been affected, and then we've got lots of stuff on there. If this was like very pure plucked classical guitar, we wouldn't be shimmying our reverbs. But we've already got we've already gotten guidance from the producer. Yeah, we're warping and freaking the sounds. So let's get freaky. Let's freak it a little bit. So now let's hear all of this in context. Okay, so it's a lot more subtle in context, which is probably good. You know, it was doing a lot, but in the context of everything else, it's not as obvious, but when you put on your cans and you spend time with the mix, like you should with music that you love, you get the bonus stuff, you get that wiggle. And when you're doing the shimmy, when you hear that kind of stuff, remember that was for you. And finally, you know, I'm a delay man, I'm a delay junkie, I gotta have it. And so let's take a look at how to take, you know, some regular degular delays and make them special. Let's jump over to the second verse. Now the second verse is similar to the first in that we've got a lot of space between lyrics. We've got line and we chill for a second. We let that space breathe and space is nice. And you don't always have to fill every second of space in a record, but I like to try if I can. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. Everything seems so cryptic Sometimes it's just for a minute Cause I don't know ways of sinning I don't know how to forget it Okay, so obviously we're not reinventing the wheel putting an echo on those lines, filling up some of that space. That is, you know, standard record stuff. I get it. But now let's get that sauce. Let's get that bechamel, right? Let's put it on there. Let's hear. Everything seems so cryptic. Sometimes it's just for So similar to the ADT, we've got that movement again, but now this is modulating, it's time-based, it's not based on the envelope, but that's fine because our delay is also time-based, so it kind of works out. It's moving and it's shifting again and it's kind of spreading and you hear where the peaks, where the resonances kind of splay out a little bit. We could just take the delay and we can do it right in this stock de stereo delay here. We can take this and we can we can use our high filter and our low filter. We can roll off stuff and then we'll have, you know, a lo-fi delay. And yeah, that'd probably get the job done if we wanted to do it regular like everybody else. But I want a little bit of movement on it. I want, because these are big gaps in the lead vocal, well, if we're going to fill that space, I want these to be special moments where we're filling the space. We're back in the second verse now. Our momentum is going. The chorus hit. We're wailing guitars. We got to have some real spice. We got to have the real chimichurri on these vocals, not the store-bought stuff. You got to make your own. Everything seems so cryptic. Man, 
the way that opens up on that delay is just really dope to me, right? And so all three of these examples are a lot of other ways when you're working in serial, they're minute details. This is like the real nitpicky stuff, but this is what takes a good effect and makes it great. This is what takes a cool moment and makes it special, right? Like when we're mixing, it's about the fine details. It's about all the magnifying glass stuff. And it's an interesting use for Volcano, which is so powerful, but it's not always like a subtle plugin. Like, you know, it really gets after it. You put that on some drums or you put that on a vocal or something directly on there and Volcano is gonna, it's gonna shred it up and it's gonna do its thing and it's Volcano for a reason. But it can also be used in this subtle way, also be used in this very nuanced way to take everyday effects or something that somebody else might have or somebody else's preset and really spice that up and really make it unique and your own and that's what makes it your art. That's what makes it your record. And that's what we're trying to do. We don't want everybody else's sound. We could listen to them for that. I want to see what you have to make and how you make it your own. And that's why I want to listen to your records. That's what makes it special. So again, my name is Willie Green. We're in the greenhouse. Shout out to Fab Filter. Shout out to Sonic Scoop. Shout out to Volcano 3. Super powerful in very bold ways and in very little nuanced ways. And both ways are important to your record making. And that's what I know. Catch you next time. Peace.